I'm Brad Levitt, president of AFT Construction, and thanks again for tuning in to our YouTube channel. So we are out here at Arcania Modern, and we're gonna show you this gutter detail we did. So for any of you that have been following us on Instagram or LinkedIn, we've talked about this process a few times, but to give you a little perspective, you can see here this soffit detail. So one of the challenges building in Scottsdale is you're dealing with not only city restrictions, but you're dealing with HOA. So they did not want to see the HOA a gutter, which HOA seems to make our life a little complicated as they typically do. So we came up with a detail with our architect and you can see here that this fascia detail, uh, you can see that these uh, trusses have been designed as we come under here. So let me show you, you can see here, you almost see this little box. You can see that the fascia detail, if you think of it as a V, see that detail going out? And you can see here that that's been framed. There's almost like a little gutter detail um, that we're gonna take you up there and show you from the above view. But this is a drain, so as all the water uh, comes into this trough, if you will, it's all sloped and it drains through roof drains. Now that go through the house that have been connected, sealed, and waterproof. So this is a great system because it captures all the the rainwater from the house doesn't have any gutters exposed and disperses that water where it needs to go. And one of the benefits too that you'll see is here on the exterior, all this fascia that's unwrapped in stucco is gonna be wrapped in, in metal. So it's gonna be a great detail. It's actually a black metal to match the black windows and doors of Pella here and give you that nice contrast. So as we're up here on the roof, you can see we mentioned down below this gutter detail. So as we take you over here, you can see this integrated gutter. And so we have uh, a foam system. This is similar to what you would see on any commercial project, any commercial roof. There's a couple benefits to this system. One, it's very low maintenance. Um, it actually adds some insulation value to the house. So from a R value, it helps with the energy. You know, we have spray foam on the inside, so it really creates that tight envelope. And then we have a silicone spray that goes over this roofing foam. And so what happens is it creates this nice channel here that has a great warranty and sustainability to the house. And you can see the buildup, what we, we would call a cricket here on the roof. So a cricket is where, you know, it comes to a point and we're moving water away from the wall. So you can see that we have a natural cricket here. This is similar. And this is the intent here is to divert the water with slope down to our drains. So another thing to point out here on the exterior, a lot of people ask us, you can see here, this little water system coming around. And what these are, this is our mist system. So we'll come through as our stucco companies here and before they uh, begin to um, install the, the stucco here on the lid, we've come through and we've pre-installed the mist system. And this is great for Phoenix, especially uh, in the warm times of year to have that moisture and, and keep that cooling effect to really enjoy that indoor outdoor living. The whole purpose of every home we design is that indoor outdoor space. That's why we're in Phoenix, is you have a large multi-slider in the great room or a large pocket door that opens up that space. You know, we have French doors throughout the house. We have sliding doors here and we have this long covered patio. So now you have this space that brings the outside in and the finish out here will, will be similar to the inside. So it looks like the house just kind of walks right out. And, and this is very similar to most of our builds in Scottsdale. One thing that's unique as we talk about pre-construction and planning is you look here with this pool. So this is, we're dealing with a protected natural desert as you can see around us. So here's our site fence. And the purpose of the site fence is we have what's called NOS. So even though our customer owns two acres, we can only build on uh, maybe 25 or 30% of, of that total land space that they own. So it's not HOA driven. The NOS is set by the city. So in Scottsdale, they have protected desert. They want that natural desert. So the homeowner, even though they purchase, there's natural um, areas that have to go back to the city or common easements, if you will, to keep that, that natural feel. The percentage, a lot of people say it's typically 25%. Well, more or less that's true. It's really dependent on the property, the HOA community, location. There's a lot of variables that come into every property, but that is pre-zoned when they buy their plan. It's all pre-plotted. And so you'll see that footprint of the entire 
piece of land the client owns, and then you'll see that section that's dashed around that's our, our building footprint. So what we typically do as a builder is we'll come set that side fence. As you see here, the side fence will come in and come around our NAOS. This is our building envelope. And because of that, we have limited access. So we don't have an ability to get equipment in here after the home is constructed. So typically the first thing that's always done is as you see here, we come in and we put these retaining walls because we do have a grade. It's not a super steep grade, but this is a canyon. And so for this Canyon Modern, we had to come in and put these retaining walls and then we had to put in the pool. That's typically the first thing that goes in. So the, the pool is uh, dug. We have all the rebar installed, inspected. We have the shotcrete put in, as you see here. And this right here is our trough. So even every detail of the trough, we have to run this through the HOA. So the HOA has restrictions on the width, the height, the depth of this trough. And you can see that you, ha you have this, this negative slope right here. So what happens is that water level comes over this tile and will drop down and give you that nice infinity edge as you're looking out to the hillside. So this is the first component to go in. And then we can start working on the home structure as you see here. And now, you know, this stage of construction is always a little bit more messy because when you're doing stucco, you have uh, the scaffolding up and it's, you know, this is right before we come in and get a nice final grade. So once the stucco is complete, we'll come pour the concrete here on the back patio and then start working on the tile work. Stucco is very common in the desert. One is uh, it, it's typically less ex expensive than some of the other finishes. Anytime you're going to be adding limestone, brick, stone, um, hardy siding, there's going to be a cost to that. But more than anything, uh, there is a requirement of a percentage of stucco that the home needs to be or a percentage of hardy siding, percentage of stone, and, and we meet those requirements. Like the fireplace, the entry tower will have stone. So there has to be stone elements. It can't just be all stucco. There has to be typically three different facades, three different finishes on exterior of a home for us to get through the HOA. So it's often asked, you know, how do we feel that creativity uh, when there's so many restrictions from the HOA? Well, you know, as you go through the, you know, every community that's a little bit different, there are variations and variances that you can uh, seek to achieve or get approved. And even in this subdivision, there is a lot of requirements. As you can see around me, a lot of the homes are, are Southwest style, you know, a little bit more desert style, but you know, they did have a tolerance for a modern home. So we came in and pushed that limit and, and asked questions with the design board, the architectural board that approves the HOA uh, to see what they would allow. You know, one of them was we had to do this integrated gutter system, um, but we could come up with a nice detail and do the metal wrapping. And then we have these nice parapet walls up top with the flat roof. And so it gives it some depth. It gives it some changes. We're going to be using a, a gray stucco with integral color. We're going to be putting some stone in and it'll just give it that different feel with the black windows, nice clean look. And one of the variances we had to get was this square corner. We talked about that on the inside, you know, in a modern home, typically you're trying to avoid a rounded corner. You want a nice clean square corner and that is modern driven. And so we were able to get a variance where they allowed us instead of a normal bull nose that we have a nice square corner. And one of my pet peeves as a builder, and maybe this is having worked with so many designers over the year, we've been really fortunate to work with some amazing designers, is whenever I see a home that the stone does not terminate. So one of the common issues in the industry that as, as you walk and see projects, this is gonna be wrapped in stone. So you can see this is what we call a scratch coat. So the stucco company is, comes in, they do just a rough scratch coat, and this will work as um, the substrate for the stone that's going to be installed over this. Now one of the common design flaws or mistakes is when they just wrap the stone and they stop here on an outside corner. That is the biggest, um, uh, one of the biggest pet peeves I have in design and construction. Anytime you're installing stone, you always want it to wrap and finish on an inside corner like here because you never want people to be able to see the side of the stone, whether it's real stone, stone veneer, doesn't matter. You don't want to see that cut raw finish. You want to make sure that you have corners here and then it dies on the inside. Never finish on an outside corner. Same thing for paint. You know, if we were to paint this in accent color, you don't want to have to have a cut in line right on that, you know, outside corner. You want to make sure that this accent now follows and paints to a nice clean termination point. So you have a nice cut in line.
Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube video today. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.